Hi guys, um, so today I wanted to talk about um, why I was disqualified from joining the United States Armed Forces. I can't really believe I'm making this video, but um, I guess it's official, you know, I, I, I can't join the Navy. I wish that I could, um, but I, I, I've done everything possible um, in order to try to get my waiver, but it just, um, it didn't work out. So I was born with um, kind of a sexual development abnormality. Um, it could be what's called androgen insensitivity syndrome, or it's possibly um, what's called gonadal dysgenesis. And to be honest, I'm just starting to learn about my quote unquote condition, to be honest with you. Um, I've kind of always known that I had it. It's just that it wasn't really something that I considered to be a medical disorder. Um, so back in July of 2014, when I went to MEPS, um, there is a medical survey that everybody has to take, and one of the questions for females is, when was your last menstrual period? And that question uh, doesn't apply to me because I don't have a uterus, ovaries, or fallopian tubes, and I am actually, or I rather, I was born with um, gonads internally. Um, so I had actual <laughs> prematurely formed testes, as difficult um, as that is to say. Um, I, I've always felt like a girl, um, and I've I've matured into what is visibly um, a normal woman. Um, but I am actually genetically male because I I have X Y chromosomes, um, while women typically are X X, and um, that's kind of what I had to face the reality of um, when I um, when I tried to join the Navy. Sorry. So, um, of course, back in July, um, when the doctor was going over my paperwork, he noticed that I didn't answer um, the question about not having a period, and I um, I tried to explain that I was just born a certain way, and that I don't have periods, and um, initially he said, that's going to disqualify you. And um, then he said that I could possibly get a waiver, but um, first he was going to need um, documentation. So um, I consented for my recruiter to help me get um, any me medical records that I had um, regarding um, my condition. And, um, you know... So a couple weeks went by, and um, the MEPS doctor was able to obtain all of my medical records, and he looked over everything, but he needed updated records. Um, so I um, had to make an appointment to go see an endocrinologist that I used to see in regards to my condition. Um, for years, I took... Um, estrogen replacement because my body doesn't produce that hormone and it was kind of needed 
for me to maintain good bone density and, you know, various other, um, there are various other things that I needed it for just because, you know, it's, it's a hormone. It's, it's vital to your health. It was a supplement that I needed. It wasn't necessarily a medication by any means. Um, I'm sorry. I just kind of lost my train of thought. I didn't really anticipate getting that emotional. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So uh, the doctor at MEPS, he was able to get all the paperwork he needed. And then I then had to get um, updated medical records with an endocrinologist that I used to see. But the problem was I stopped seeing her four or five years ago. And then she had already left the clinic that I used to go to when she opened up her own private practice. Um, couldn't get in touch with her new office and I would have been considered a new patient. So I basically had to find a new doctor. Um, I did that. Uh, long story short, met with the new doctor and she basically told me that I had to go through some medical tests in order to make sure in their medical opinion, I was okay enough to join the military. They checked my bone density, adrenal glands, you know, how my body would react to stress, um, you know, just various things. And I had to wait like two months following the MEPS doctor's instructions in order just to get a consultation with this civilian specialist. Long story short, um, you know, I, I got done with all the medical tests um, at the end of November had a final consultation in January with the endocrinologist and she, um, along with her fellow at the clinic, gave me written permission to join the military. Um, and I thought everything was going to be fine and good to go. Um, the letter was forwarded to my recruiters and they forwarded it to um, the doctor at the processing station. And within a few days of that letter being sent to the processing station, I received a document in the mail um, from the Department of Defense, you know, signed by that MEPS doctor saying that I was disqualified due to defect of genitalia. And, um, I just kind of, it's, it's still hard for me to process because I know, you know, if you go to the military official website, it kind of states clearly that, um, amenorrhea is a disqualifying factor and that the absence of a uterus explained or not is also disqualifying, um, Following the night that I got that letter, I drove to MEPS the next morning without my recruiters even knowing, and I talked to the Navy liaison, and she looked up the code um, that the doctor used to disqualify me, and um, Apparently, you know, she said that he used the right code and she couldn't pronounce what the, the, the label was, but it was basically something associated with um, being um, a hermaphrodite and um, the bullet underneath just said something along the lines of not being... Um, or, or being an indefinite sex is what it said. And, um, from that point, after I had summarized, you know, my, my circumstances and my whole, like, journey, she said that I could write a letter of intent or, um, a letter of activity, like, handwritten, um, to be reviewed by... Um, I think the Navy Medical Board, I think is what she said. And um, she basically said I could write anything that I feel the doctor may have left out. 
and you know she said I was able to put some emotion into it if I wanted to which I kind of did um, I think it was as eloquent as it could have been but it still didn't quite meet the DOD's standards and um, following review of that letter um, to the medical board, my the leading petty officer from um, my recruiting station called me and said that they didn't grant me my waiver. And um, this time, instead of defect of genitalia, it was about um, my bone mineral density. Um, they decided to make it about that reason this time, which, I don't know, still isn't a valid opinion. A valid reason, in my opinion. Um, you know, a lack of estrogen, you know, is associated with, um, you know, more rapidly decreasing bone density, but I'm taking supplements to fix that now. So I, I don't see how that would really be an issue. I've never fractured or broken a bone all my life. And, um, aside from that, like, I know that other females like myself have made it into the military without any issues, and I, I don't know if it's, if it's budget cuts that's kind of making them weed out whoever they can, or if it's just, you know, this particular region that happens to be, you know, super strict on certain things. I just, I don't understand because I feel like there were multiple things that they could have disqualified me with, but none of them were significant enough to the point where they should have, you know, disqualified me. I, I don't know if they think I have a psychological condition as a result of, you know, how I was born or what the deal is, you know. As far as I'm concerned, I'm just a regular, you know, heterosexual woman with no desire to change that. And it just seemed ridiculous that I had to sort of justify that by writing on paper I just, I'm kind of at a loss for words right now. You know, this has been my goal for seven months. And even though my recruiter told me it wasn't a guarantee that everything would work out, I really believed that it was going to happen. And um, it, it, it just didn't. So, um, for all you future sailors out there, future soldiers or whomever you may be. Um, I wish you good luck and um, I wish I could be there with you. Um, but I do believe that all things happen for a reason. And, um, as challenging and as stressful as these past couple weeks or so have been for me, um, I think, I think I'm going to be able to move on, um, with a leveled head and, um, with at least a semi-optimistic view. Um, maybe the military just kind of wasn't meant to be for me. Okay, I'm just rambling. Um, I know I wasn't really obligated to make this video, but I, I really wanted to join the Navy for, for various reasons. Um, Thanks for watching.